the first. We are the first females to go platinum. We are the first females to win a Grammy. We have done many, many firsts. Yo, we broke down some barriers. The legacy for Salt, Pepper, and Spinderella is our history. What we said in our music, how we impacted women in different generations and generations to come. For me, I hold on my shoulders the DJ culture. Not many females doing it before I started. There were a few, but for the most part, those that come after me and us now have a blueprint and can meet that standard and raise the bar. Yo, Sandy Yo, what's up? Have you ever been to jam where people just stand? In the beginning, our goal was to get on the radio. <laughs> our first song was The Showstopper, which was the answer to Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh's The Show, and that was the song that put us on. It was the way we got our foot in the door as a group, and it really was because Roxanne Shante had done the answer to... Um, UTFO. Thank you, darling. She was kind of like our blueprint. As women getting into the industry, it's kind of like the way you got in back then, and so we did the showstopper because we knew the showstopper was gonna make some noise. You know, people were gonna pay attention. But Douglas and Richie won't like it, so come on then, let's stop the show. You said it loud. The name Salt and Pepper came from a verse where we used to say, we go together like Salt and Pepper. Our name was um, Super Nature. Super Nature. But we go together like Salt and Pepper kind of stuck. People started calling us that and referring to us as those Salt and Pepper girls. So we just stuck with that. Open is yo Spinderella, please drop. Okay, now. I started as Deidre Roper from the Pink Houses in Brooklyn. Hey! I grew up in apartment 7H. Hey! I was not always Spinderella. I was given the name from Herbie, and there was a Spinderella before me. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. They, they can tell you better, but they were looking for a girl DJ, and that day basically changed my life. They said, here, here's your new Monica. Do what you do with it. And I built the name. Spinderella, my DJ's a turntable trooper. My partner, Peppa, she's a power booster. We were setting out to be heard, to be noticed, and to stand out in a male-dominated field of music. With the success of the showstopper, it was a trajectory for us, you know? And so we always had to come stronger, we always had to come better, we always had to come harder. And so there was a lot of thought put into everything that we did. And Tramp was a song that was objectifying men, which we knew would be strong and would stand out. It's like we had to be able to, to stand with the men. So to me, that song was just like blatantly saying, you know, I know what you are, I know what you're about. And we knew a lot of women would relate to that. I think that they were the first women's hip hop group that talked about women's issues, putting women's thoughts and feelings and all that first. They'll always stand out to me as trailblazers. Those girls were the first one to kick the door wide open and say, we got flow, we gonna come hard with it, and y'all better respect it. Kirby, the genius that he is, tuned his ear uh -huh. into Go-Go. Uh -huh. And before that, my mic sound nice, which was a Go-Go groove. And as we were traveling, and when we would go through those areas, they would go crazy for my mic sound nice, which gave birth to Shake Your Thing. They don't understand the way you <laughs> Kind of just tapping into that whole go-go movement, you know, that is still so ingrained in that area, Maryland and D.C. Come on! Push it! You know you got to! Push It remains popular because it was a song that was so different, and it came out at a time and it stood out from all the other songs. It was a great dance song, it was a great video. Personally, me and Pep is so funny, we did not like Push It when we recorded it. We recorded it with Fresh Gordon and Herbie in Brooklyn in a bathroom. Herbie, of course, was producing the song, and Fresh Gordon started playing the synthesizer line. Herbie was like, hold up, wait, play that again. Added it to the song, but the funny thing about Push It is, 
It was the B-side to Tramp. As you know, we did a Tramp video. That was the song. But Push It ended up being the biggest salt and pepper record by happenstance. When I first started with them, and we were on the Wipeout tour, we weren't doing Push It, and I remember the crowd chanting, Push It, Push It. There was a DJ who turned Tramp over and started playing Push It, and it just grew legs on the radio without us knowing. And all of a sudden, Push It was an unintentional hit record, and we did the song on the tour, and the crowd went crazy, and we were like, who knew? I remember also, we were struggling because we were so popular. We were platinum. We were traveling in Europe and all everywhere. So everyone was considering that a sellout of being popular. Herbie was like our Spengali, and he was also my boyfriend, you know, so he was very instrumental in developing the sound of Salt and Pepper from the lyrics to the music to the ideas and everything. And over the years, of course, we started writing more ourselves. I produced Expression, which was a platinum single, Toot Toot. And I learned from him because being under him all the time and being around him, being in the studio. So we would be remiss if we didn't say Herbie was like the man when it came to developing the sound I agree. of Salt and Pepper. You know, life oh, yeah. is all about expression. Expression wasn't my first time producing. I produced Independent. Me and Pep wrote that together, and I produced the music. And Expression, it was um, inspired by Madonna's Express Yourself, kind of like my hip hop version of that. And that song meant to me exactly what it says, you know, like, be yourself. Joe want to be like Bob. Everybody wants to be like somebody, but how about you just be you. Gotta be you and only you. You don't have no choice but to be you. And I think Salt and Pepper have always been about that, always been about being who we are organically. I like What a Man. It has like that old school feel to it and what it talks about, how it builds the men up. I wanna take a minute or two and give much respect to, to the man that's made a difference in my world. It's sexy and the fact that we did it with In Vogue, our other sisters in the game, I really love that song. Classic. I love Shoop as well. I think Shoop was a coming out song. I think that was <laughs> us being independent. I wanna shoot, baby. Shoot. At the time, the era when that song dropped, we had a lot of stuff going on internally with the camp itself, and it was the song that allowed us to come out. On your mark, get set, go, let me go, let me shoot to the next man in the three piece suit. That song was created in Queen at my Jamaica State Department, and I said, I got this song called Shoot. She's like, I'm gonna write to it. And that being the first single for the Very Necessary album. And it was the single that popped that album off. You do what you do, you make me wanna shoot. We were very feminine at a time when women were kind of more hardcore doing that hardcore thing. And I think people really gravitated to the fun fashion and femininity that Salt and Pepper. Well, we did hardcore, but we was dressed until very sexy. Very <laughs> sexy. Yeah. Yeah. The Push It jackets, Play from Kid and Play, designed the jacket because he had a leather store in Queens at the time. So he designed the Salt and Pepper jacket, and Dapper Dan actually put the jacket together. So that's a little history a lot of people don't know. I think the colors of Push It stood out. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Yes. People were attracted to those colors too. It's almost like when Cross Colors came out, that which is Yeah, after. you're attracted to it. Like you're just like, what is that? Like you want to see it. That coupled with the hair when they were doing the asymmetric. And that look is so iconic. The Kente hats came from this woman that was selling Kente hats in Harlem. And then we just did these body suits. The boots was from Thava. They were like some cheap ass boots. And when you look at that picture, it became this iconic fashion moment that will live on forever. And it kind of looks like, a, like three superheroes. superheroes. 